Just in case you didn't know who I am, I'm Don McCabe, the Research Director of the AFCO Educational Research Foundation and the author of Sequential Spelling One for Home Study Learning. One of the more frequent questions that I'm asked is, why did Sunlight Curriculum pick up your spelling program when they already had one? Well, the answer lies in the difference between my approach to spelling and a standard approach. Now, Sunlight did have perhaps the very best spelling program at the time. And then they found out about me and about the AFCO Foundation, and they found out from homeschoolers who were using it. Now, to give you an idea of what a regular program is, I took the fifth level of one of the best spelling programs on the market. And, you know, let's say words like base, scrap, claim, crane, crate, fake, pray, date, faint, task, stray, and bait. Twelve words in which the kids study in various ways, and then there's a test on Friday. That's standard. But what many homeschoolers have found is that after the test on Friday, huh? The words, the spellings of those words just kind of disappear. And there is a reason for it. And that has to do with the way God created our computer brains. The universities have been wrong in telling people that we have two kinds of memories, short term and long term. Well, I have only been speaking for uh, a matter, I think, of less than a minute. I don't think that you can possibly repeat all the words that I have said since the beginning. Our memories, we have memories that last for split seconds, a 50th of a second, our visual memories. We have memories that last for minutes, memories that last for hours, memories that last for days. For example, I think all of you can tell, tell me what you had to eat today, maybe yesterday. But how many days can you go back and name everything you had to eat and in order? Yeah. What we want to do is make sure that spelling is for life and not for just a couple days. Now, there's another big difference. In regular books, spelling books, the lists are keyed to grade level. Grade level curriculum. For example, the word yellow is considered to be a first grade word because colors are taught in the first grade. Well, <laughs> To me, it's something strange that they wait until the third grade to teach yell and the fourth grade to teach low. That doesn't make any sense to me. What does make sense is that we teach words in patterns. Now, notice on all of these words, is there one that has a plural? No. Is there one in past tense? No. An ing form? No. An er form? No. This is where a lot of mistakes are made in spelling. Is in the eds, in the ings. The standard approach to spelling is that we teach by rules. Give them the base word and then expect them to spell the word strayed to be able to add the ed. Mm -hmm. When it's almost impossible to hear. Okay. What I'd like to do is show you how sequential spelling works. The last good study of spelling was done in 1953 by Harry Green, the new Iowa spelling scale. 
And he determined that the easiest word in the English language really to spell is the word in. So therefore, that's where I decided to start. But I'm not going to just teach the word in. Like in the very first lesson, I give the word in. And of course, almost every kid can spell it correctly. However, if they happen to be using my response book, they will make a mistake. Because what this nasty Mr. McCabe did was to put the first day in the middle column. They will automatically put it in the 61st day. But that is so, and, the, and it's in the directions, so the parent can point out my motto at the bottom of the page, mistakes are opportunities to learn. And they will find that on almost all of the pages in the book, mistakes are opportunities to learn and other little comments. Okay. In this book, I give directions and for the first seven days and sentences for them to use. The first word is in, and I, my directions are to write the word in in green or whatever is your favorite color. Then you ask the student to spell the word pin. And what you do is have them write the word in and then you give the spelling. Pin. They correct their spelling immediately. You do not go on to the next word until they have corrected it. That is key. And this is, in all of the studies that have been done on different techniques of teaching spelling, the one element that is in all good spelling programs is the element of student self-correction. Well, I've added one more element to that, and that is the immediate st student self-correction. We don't wait until next week to make our corrections. Okay, then we give the word sin. Probably the only spelling program in existence in which we teach sin in the first lesson. So then we ask them, did you put the in? In sin. They correct. Then you give the word spin. They write, and again you ask, did you get the in? That is in pin and in spin. Can you see the pin that's in spin? And that is the end of the first lesson. Real easy. Now let's show what the second lesson is going to contain. Well, we start out in the, let's say the second lesson should be in the next day. I start out with the word I. Like in, I am your teacher, I am your mother, I am whatever. And make sure that they spell it with a capital I. And then, if you want to, and I have that in the book, I have a list of whatever homophones may be in the lesson. And of course, there are three different eyes. Well, just two eyes on the face, and you can point that out if you want to, or not. You're the parent. You know whether you want to teach them an eye, and I always like that this is like an eye right here, and the, the Y is like a nose. But you can also teach them when I mean this I, A Y E, as in I, I, sir. 
the nautical word for yes, or from the Scotland where they use I. Okay. Then you can go on to the word pins. Day before they had the word pin. Now we're going to review the in sound. They write pins and you ask them, did you get the in? That's in pins. And you put the S and the P. That's kind of backwards, isn't it? But then again, I'm a dyslexic. And dyslexics think a little bit differently than the ordinary people do. But I have found that working from the ends of words really work. Pins. Okay, the next word, of course, will be sins. You ask them to write the word, they write it, and then you show them the N, the S, at the N and the S at the beginning. And then we go to spins. Oh. They write, and you show the correct spelling. Doesn't take long to do it. Spins. Then after spins, you give them the word kin. Oh, I'll bet that your your son or your daughter doesn't know the meaning of the word kin unless they're from the deep south. Because the word kin is almost never used except on television when they're talking about a terrible accident, but they won't give the names pending notification of the next of kin. Well, that's your... Check with your child and see whether they know that you are the next of kin. They, but you make sure that they write in. No, you know, I, I didn't use green this time. No, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we make a distinction between the sound in and the K that comes in kin. Okay, then we go to the word skin. That won't be too difficult for them. I'm leading them right into it from the word before. And you can, did you have the kin that's in skin? Then, after they've corrected that, if they made a mistake, you give the word win. That won't be very tough. All they know is that they have to put a W in there. Win. And then, can you guess? Twin will be the next word. And while you're there, if you wish, you can point out that that crazy number two has a W in it, just like the word twice. Hmm. There might be some kind of reason for that. Silly W in the word two, because it's in twin, two, and in twice, two. Okay, that's the end of the second lesson. Oh, I almost forgot a very important thing. In the book, in the directions and how to use it, I ask you, to have your child attempt the spelling of the word beginning. And gee, you know how a lot of kids will end up spelling the word beginning? They'll start with a with a word with a letter B, and I've had them go immediately to the G and G. Okay. Don't worry, don't try and teach him the word. Just take that misspelling. Put it aside, and guess what? On the fourth day of the program, they will correctly spell the word beginning without once having studied it. And this is kind of key, and a big difference between my program and any other. I don't believe in studying. Studying, 
you can study for a test, and I can remember in the fifth grade studying all the capitals and all the states. There were only 48 then, so that was a little easier. But the largest cities, second largest cities, and all those nice little facts, and I got an A on the test. You know, I wouldn't like to take that test now. I've forgotten. I studied, and I studied my Latin. Oh, I don't think I could pass any Latin test today. Okay. Now watch what happens on the third day. We are going to have, start out with the word fin. And we put, we put the in, and then the th in front. They'll either get it right or they'll get it wrong. If they get it wrong, they correct. And on we go. Then we get the word pinned. He pinned the tail on the donkey. Now this is where almost all of them will make a mistake. You show the end. You show the P. And they got the pin part. A lot of them will put a D immediately. Because after all, a word like wind is W-I-N-D, is it not? Well, we just have to show them that the E-D form with the N, we have to have another N. You don't have to know the rule about the consonant, vowel consonant, doubling that second consonant when we add an E-D or I-N-G. That's a rule. And if you want to teach the rule, fine, but that will not help them in the spelling because if you have to think about a rule in spelling a word, that will break your concentration in your composition. Spelling needs to be 100% automatic. So you just have them correct the mistake that they made. Make sure they double that in. We don't want them to write pined. Okay. So now we go on to the ne next word. Sinned. And make sure that you use it in the sentence. Um, I have sinned many times. Okay. So again, you show the N. I-N. You show the S for sin. Then you double the N and make sure they add E-D. So you're calling their attention to the E-D, sinned. Then you can give them the, any one of the three I's that you wish. That's fine. Then, after the word I, we go to shin. No one likes to be kicked in the shin, and you just show the SH in front of the N. And then we have skins, like how many rabbit skins does it take to make a mink coat? And if your kid doesn't smile, they're not catching it. Okay. Skins. Make sure that they have the N, the S, and the S, K. Skins. Then you go to wins. Real easy. You give the I, N, the W to make win, and the S to make wins. And then can you guess what next word it'll be? Yes, twins. Constantly building, constantly repeating. Think about how many times we've gotten the in sound already. And then we go to the word B. And we can tell them that uh, we want to use the word be in a sentence. Uh, we will be there, be. And this time, you ask them, 
What do you think? What is the last sound in B? And it's E. And the first sound? And if at that point you wanted to mention the fact that there are a couple other ways of spelling B, fine. Because we can have a spelling B, in which case we have an extra E, right? Or we could have an ant B. But oh well. Okay, we got we got them correcting B. And now we give the word begin. Mmm, B, and then gin. They should be able to get the B. And you ask them, did you get the B in begin? Did you get the N at the end of begin? And leave a space so that you can put in the letter G. So you can see B and then gin. Okay. Then we give the word chin. That shouldn't be any problem. If they've already learned a few of the sounds, they know that the CH has the sound of ch. And then we have chin. And the last word for this lesson is a simple word, she. So we give she, and we can put the E there as the ending and put the SH. And that's the end of that lesson. So I think you can see that uh, it really builds. And this is something that the other spelling programs don't have. A concentration on the S's, the E-D's, the I-N-G's, the E-R's. And it has nothing to do with grade level. Because, in fact, on Lesson 134, your students will correctly spell the word presidential. And that's hardly a first grade word. It's, um, but how do we get to presidential, you ask? Well, that comes from the IDE family. Because if I'm going to be teaching the word hide, I'm surely going to be teaching the word ride. And if I can teach the word ride, why not bride? You know, that's in a first grader's vocabulary. And if it isn't, it should be. And if we can teach those words, we certainly should be able to teach side and besides that's not very difficult and if we can teach side we can teach reside oh and if you can teach reside why not preside and of course the day after we teach reside, we'll have resides. Day after that, they'll have resided. Oh, that might even be vocabulary. Gee, I think it's all right to teach vocabulary, don't you? Residing. We might even teach resident. Ah, now we begin to see, ah, resident, president, hmm, reside, preside, oh, they all build up, and it's not too far to go to get the IAL residential, and a P for presidential. This building is building on patterns, and this is what makes sequential spelling different from all spelling programs and this is why it works and why sunlight curriculum is now carrying sequential spelling 
as part of their package. I thank you.